I'll just do, I'll just scan this planet and then, oh, I might as well do the mission on this planet. And then, well, I might as well finish off this cluster. And then I might as well keep going because I might forget which of these systems within this cluster of a nebula I visited. (laughs) So I might as well clear all of them. Oh, look, a new mission's popped up within this nebula. Well, I best do that one so I can remember. Yeah, um, I was on it for about five solid hours today until... I was luckily interrupted by the family returning home, and then it was like, ah. Did you just start it today? Um, No, when did I start it? Oh, God, it was only yesterday. Yeah, I've been playing it for nine hours over the last 24 hours. I just needed needed something because I've got potentially uh, a month of weekdays that are going to be fairly empty. Mm. And rather than just doing like little bit games to try and get an achievement here and achievement there, replay Resident Evil, that sort of thing, I figured, well, I might as well just upload Mass Effect and then it's there. Mm. Um, but then it was midday and I had nothing else going on. So I figured, oh, I'll just, I'll, I'll have a look. I'll, I'll check out the menus at least because it's been sitting on my shelf for a year now. So this is a legendary edition. This is the legendary edition, yeah. yeah. And it is a mixed bag. Mm. Uh so far, I've I've only got to the point where <clears throat> um, uh, Ferros and Navaria are available as the main missions, but I'm literally doing everything else around them first to to level up, yeah, and uh, and flesh out the story. Uh, so, yeah, in terms of graphical improvements, texture wise, it's leaps and bounds ahead. You know, you can you can see every little um, texture of the guns and everything. Um, it's never looked better, but the Facial animations are basically the same. Mm. They just have more texture. So you've got the original model with all its sort of stiff rubberiness, like something out of the 1980s. But it now has more flesh-like texture. Mm. So it seems more uncanny now than it did 14 years ago. Right. If you get what I'm coming from. I think so. So some fare better than others. Like Shepard looks great. Obviously all the aliens look great. A lot of the human characters, therein lies the problem. That's where you got your, your Tom Hanks and Canny Valley, and it all gets a bit <laughs> weird. Like Captain Anderson is now very off-putting. I don't like to be around him <laughs> at all, <laughs> and it's making me feel uncomfortably racist. <laughs> um, but no, so another. I mean, like the Krogans, the Turians, the, uh, the Asari, the Geth, Saren, Sovereign, they all look stunning. The text and everything, it's it's just the humans. Mm. Never have I wanted to romance Ashley Williams less than I have now. <laughs> <laughs> even though she's a blatant space racist. Yeah, even though she's a spacist. <laughs> that was. But she's the only character I've never romanced. You know, in, in fact, I keep accidentally killing her in every single time I get a playthrough because <laughs> I always forget which one I need to send where in order to have the other one with me. Mm. And it's always uh, it's it's always Ashley I send off because. Either I forget or I think, well, I want to continue my romance with Liara. So I'll just shoot, uh, shunt the other woman out of the picture. Mm, mm. So I've never had a playthrough where Ashley survived beyond the first game. Never, ever? None that I've carried on through. Mm, interesting. Maybe once by accident, but the number of times I've done Mass Effect 1, it has been overwhelmingly Caden that survives, and I hate Caden. Everybody hates Caden. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes him. He's the default dead guy. Well, he's essentially just a carryover from Knights of the Old Republic, isn't he? Um, mm. What was the character's name in that? Is it Karth? Karth Merengue's Dark Place? I can't remember. Um, he, he's. I think he might even be the same voice actor. And they just pretty mm. much uh, copy the, the character straight from that. Um, yeah, I, I think the first time I played Mass Effect on the 360 way back when, I um, romanced... What do you say his name was? God, my memory. Liara? No, the other one. The racist. Oh, Ashley. Ashley, yes. Just because... Um, uh, I don't know why. Because probably just because she was human. <laughs> <laughs> you bigot. Yeah, I, I, I was also a space racist. Um, no, uh, Liara just was really uninteresting to me. And it she was, is. She's incredibly was, bland. Yeah, and it was like, well, I guess... I, I, I guess you kind of... The same species, at least. Um, so, it yeah, it was... A, Toss up between two incredibly bland characters. Mass Effect <laughs> Two was when they kind of um, give her a bit of oomph. Yeah, give her a bit of oomph and make it a bit of a choice between Miranda and. I uh, know she she's Liara isn't in the second one until the DLC she, is she? I think she she's in it peripherally. She's in the, the DLC as a yeah. non-playable character, and then she comes in for the Shadow Broker DLC. Yeah, 
and then they plonk her in three and she's treating you like a messiah. Mm. Um, this is a massive callback to our very first episode. Officially first episode, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it our official, the, or was it second? Might even be third. It, well, it's our second episode, but the first one was episode triple zero, the pilot. Is that one? No, no, no. The pilot. Oh was no, you're right. It's Avengers. our second episode. First episode was whining about the Simpsons. The Simpsons being <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Two years later, we're still right. <laughs> I, I'll always remember that because um, I sent it over to a friend and was like, "Oh, what do you think of this?" And her uh, response was, "For a first episode, you, you, I don't know if whining about things is is really the best way to go." And I kind of <laughs> thought, "Yeah, that's actually really, <laughs> really good." Know, has she it. ever been on the internet? <laughs> Has she ever been on YouTube? Well, I think the the pilot that we did was really quite um, positive, wasn't it? I can't. Remember. It was. We were a bundle of joy. We hadn't been disillusioned by the MCU at that point. Mm. And then, uh, and then the first official episode was like, yeah. So these are all the worst episodes of The Simpsons um, <laughs> that, that killed our fandom. <laughs> well, you know, to be fair, every everyone bitches about how The Simpsons should have been cancelled decades ago. But no one ever really goes into specifics. So I think that we stood out from the herd by saying, here are many, many reasons why we don't like the modern Simpsons. Mm. Mm. Potentially. I don't know. Yeah. I can. All, I never went back and listened to the episode, so I'm only going from uh, like uh, just just uh, brief fragments of my memory of that conversation. Anyway. The um, only thing I remember is Steve Buscemi. That's the only thing <laughs> I remember is worth bitching about. <laughs> he hangs over all of our episodes. He's yeah. there. Yeah. He's there. The harbinger of doom. Even if we don't Whether he's him, saying he's hello to the fellow young kids or greeting Homer, he's always <laughs> there. Uh, so before I forget to ask you, have mm. they made any um, gameplay improvements? Uh, because they were supposed to have, I think, for, for, the, for the first <laughs> Funny game. Funny you should say that. I was cursing the Marco. The Mako? The Marco? How have you pronounce it? Let's the call the whole thing that, Yeah. Yes, let's call the whole thing off. Um, the thing that handles like a shopping trolley in a bouncy house. Yes. It is, they've had 14 years to work on it and it's worse than ever. <laughs> I got myself stuck in a ravine and had to quit the mission and go back in because I just couldn't get, I was, I was perched between uh, two cliff faces straddling the alien skull that I was trying to scan and I couldn't bounce off it. I couldn't turn. I couldn't reverse. I, I was just stuck. No matter what I did, physics abandoned me. So, uh, yeah, they they may claim to have made design choices, but it's every bit as janky as it ever was. Mm. Maybe it's two and three they've really honed, because one was a lot more about... Um, it was more role-player-ish, whereas it was more streamlined, shoot 'em up gunner, come the sequels. Mm. But... It, it it has been a while. It's been well over 10 years since I touched any Mass Effect. Mm. And I can't really tell of any improvements. Right. Yeah, I was, aesthetic. I was disappointed. I was in the, the vast minority, I'm sure, considering how uh, beloved the second game is. But I really enjoyed the role play aspect of the mm. of the very first game. And I was dis- disappointed to see that they uh, that they got rid of that. Um, but again, that, that comes from the Knights of the Old Republic kind of uh, follow through where... That, exactly. Yeah, it just felt traditional at that point to me. Even though I, I mean, <laughs> it's it's ironic because I, I'm sure we've had this conversation before. But I started Knights of the Old Republic. Um, I got it for my birthday back in 2000 and whatever, and um, was so excited. It was like, oh, this has got great reviews. Star Wars game. Can't wait to get stuck into it. And then it's got this really weird battle system. And mm. within an hour, I was like. Okay, I'm d- <laughs> that's it for me. I hate this. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes. This is so impenetrable, I'm not coming back to it. And then it was like a month or so later, I, th- I thought, well, I paid like 50 quid for this, so I'm going to force myself to play it. And then ended up falling <laughs> in love with it. So, uh, And and then the, the follow through with Mass Effect was uh, very natural in that regard. You know, you, See, I had a similar story with Mass Effect where I, I didn't know how any of it worked and impatient that I was back in 2000. 8, 2009, no, 2008, I just couldn't be bothered to learn what the controls were. So I had, at some point, inadvertently switched <laughs> over to a pistol and didn't know how to change it back. I didn't know you could change guns. <laughs> All I knew is that I must have done some upgrade to my weapon because it meant it now meant my assault rifle was handling like a pistol mm. and I couldn't take down the boss. And I was like, fuck this game. 
came back to it a couple of months later over the fabled Easter. I'd just discovered Evangelion. The sun was shining. Holy the university shit, was, was coming to a glorious end. Yeah. Wow. I tried it over the Christmas, got really frustrated with it, and went back to it the Easter. And uh, it was just like everything clicked into place. And it was like, oh, there's a wheel. Oh, look, I have abilities. <laughs> <laughs> I like this game. And uh, I've been in love with it ever since. But it was a, it was a long, slow, painful process to get there. I, um, God, when did I play it? Th- this is one of those situations where I'd love to go through my old save game files and things like that, just to check dates. Like, I've got, um, th- this is unrelated to video games, but uh, I've still got the hard drive back from when we were at university, and so for <laughs> certain TV shows, I've got the very date that they were downloaded, and we'll have most likely <laughs> watched them. And it's a really nice nostalgic blast from the past to see uh, uh, How I Met Your Mother season you know, three episode mm. nineteen uh, when that was downloaded. You watched episode and... nineteen without me. Well, you know, um... you and Mike traitors to the end. <laughs> you and your Chuck. Did you? You yeah, but you didn't like Chuck, did you? D- well, only because I felt left out. Oh really? Oh, I see. Oh, sorry, no, I enjoyed Chuck fine. Just I didn't enjoy it as much as Mike. As he sat there clapping palms together during every second it was on, <laughs> like a seal. Um, <laughs> no one likes seals. Um, what am I supposed to be looking? Especially for? the navy. <laughs> I completely forgot what I was supposed to be looking for. Oh, uh, when the Mass Effect came out, uh, it was. The, I think it was two thousand seven, wasn't it? Um, was it Mass Effect? What was the? I think it was. What was the three hundred and sixty? collector's uh, not collector's edition the player's choice range called can you remember oh that yeah what was it i remember it had the gray band across the top it's like oh i don't want my collection solid with a reprint version of the game yeah uh, from memory i think i bought that version for my brother <laughs> he could no, have not had a snob value it was just years down the line he wanted to play mass effect and i only had the collector's edition it's like well you know, I, I don't want to lend it to him when he's at university because lending anything to someone living at university, you know, that's just going to oh, go yeah. badly wrong. So yeah. I, I bought him a version for his birthday. Uh, was it Xbox Classic or something like that? Xbox Classics. You, yes, you might it, be right. PlayStation Platinum back in the day. Back in the day of PS1, they brought out the PlayStation Platinum line for the, like, the resells. Yeah. Uh, Mass Effect 360 Classics release date. Let's have a look, shall we? Um, you see, if I'd have left my, uh, my old new microphone in, you'd have been able to hear all the ASMR <laughs> keyboard sound effects. <laughs> all the breathing, oh, all uh, the yes, rasping. Exactly. Yeah, there were the uh, Xbox 360 classics. Uh, it says 2013 here, but that's most definitely not correct. That's definitely a re-release. I'm, I'm damn sure... Because I I have memory for these things. Mm. I was never happier than I was during the Easter break of 2008. And it's because I have three specific things in my mind. Evangelion, Mm. doing my gross visceral horror movie photo shoot for my photography project for media. I've still got those photos. (laughs) They're great, aren't they? Mm. And finishing Mass Effect uh, and just having the, uh, the race on Ilion. Mm. and the uh, the F, uh, the fonts playing F1 at the end and just thinking, oh, my life is complete. <laughs> um, yeah, the release date for this one says November 2007. Uh, yeah, that'll be the one. Because yeah, I'd never heard of it. I, I just got it for Christmas. My brother uh, recommended it to, to Dad to, to get it for me. And he was like, yeah, it's meant to be like the next big thing in sci-fi and gaming. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll take a punt on it. Struggled my way through it with gritted teeth for as long as I could. <laughs> <laughs> Rage quit for a bit. And then, yeah, like I said, just got lucky in that I actually had the fortitude to look at what the control panels were and, uh, and then never look back. Even three I defended for the longest time under the... Um, oh, what's the ending that I defend? The one where it's all in your head. The... All oh, right. Assimilation. Yeah. Is it assimilation? Isn't it? Isn't it all a simu? Yeah. Don't you need to uh, get a certain tick certain boxes to for, yes. for it for it not to be a simulation? Yeah. You've yeah. got to tick a certain number of boxes. This is back before they did the the patchwork mm. for the the later release. But you had to do a hundred percent of the game mm. on a certain difficulty, and then pick the red ending. 
because red meant it was wrong for the reapers and they were in your head messing with your mind which meant that normally you'd skew towards green or blue and away from red mm. but by picking red it was the only way to actually destroy the reavers and it was the only way to see a like, three second cut scene right at the end where shepherds lying in rubble and in hails mm, that's right I so, um, because I got to Mass Effect Three after all of the DLC and all the controversy had, had passed. It was mm. it was a while after, so I. I oh, I don't think the controversy's tra- passed even now. Um, well, from my point of view, the mm. ending was far superior to what I'd read from people. Um, yep. I was I was happy with it. It's still a bit meh. But it's still incredible with meh. with the um, DLC. The, the DLC really adds a lot to the experience. Uh, the Citadel DLC and the uh, Leviathan. Leviathan. The that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because that that pretty much explains the whole goddamn plot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <where> are the <laughs> Reavers? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember just being blown away that that hadn't been included in the main game, and thinking, well, mm. well, what was the point? <laughs> it's. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting that that wasn't in the main game, seriously. Um, it, well, it's just like the Prothean character being removed. Thanks, EA. DA, mm. Day one DLC, a fantastic practice you put into motion there. It was day one DLC. Oh, that's... Yeah, th- there's no excusing that. No yes. excuse for it whatsoever. So, so I got lucky in that um, I waited until all that had been released and, and played it complete and, and really had a good time with it um, for, for the most part, I think. And um, and yeah, the, the I think the, the Citadel DLC adds a lot as well. At, mm. at the time, that was being heralded as the best ever DLC that had been released, and um, I think I can I can understand why because it's pure fan service. <laughs> oh, absolutely! <laughs> yeah. it's, it's wonderful for it. <laughs> it's so much fun. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back round to that. But I'm not going to play the games back to back. No, break me. It's far too much. Two alone is daunting at this point. But I at least want to play one to conclusion over the next couple of weeks because mm. that's that's a nice nostalgic walk for me 14 years later. So maybe I'll tackle two next year. Yeah. I'm confused about when I played all these games now because I thought that um, I played Mass Effect uh, prior to uni. But that obviously can't have been the case because it's not uh, the case at all. Yeah, because... It, and it, you were very late playing too as well. I remember that I was trying to buy your collector's edition off you when you hadn't even played the game at that point. And that's actually backfired. So what happened mm. for people listening is that I play. I must have played one around about the same time you did, or maybe even after university. Um, but I bought the collector's edition with the full intent of playing it and <laughs> put it off and put it off and put it off and put it off until the point of thinking, well, at this point... I may as well just keep it sealed <laughs> and, <laughs> and 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 buy another version, you know, uh, a cheap. playable version. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I did the same thing with uh, number three. <laughs> so I've still got that seal somewhere, but it's backfired on me massively because now it's not even worth what I paid at the time. Um, yep. <laughs> and I could have got an absolute fortune back in the day. Um, so screw you, EA, for uh, for just completely shitting all over the Mass Effect IP to the extent that what I assumed would be my retirement fund now uh, is, is worth absolutely nothing. So, yeah. I don't think I feel you. I'm sitting on 4,000 copies of Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see those on occasion going for like uh, two ninety nine, three ninety nine 3 on, H- on uh, Amazon. They're just trying to be like, Please just take it. Just take them. Uh, still, it, it always like, nope. fooled me during the sales. It's like, oh my god, the Mass Effect Legacy trilogy is down to four pounds. Oh, it's Andromeda. <laughs> <laughs> A game so embarrassing that we looked at the ending of Mass Effect Three and went, you know what? It wasn't all bad. <laughs> it's the Bioware equivalent of the uh, WWE Two K. 20 games that came out. <laughs> there were so. so many great videos of <laughs> people's horrific experiences, particularly that Asari and her grin, that mm. rictus grin as she rugby tackled the main character. Um, but what was the, there was another one as well where uh, there, there was an Asari telling a, a, a horrible story about all the family being killed and she has the biggest smile on the her face. The biggest smile, <laughs> <laughs> yes. We find that with, um, oh God, I, I've just deleted off the hard drive. The thing I was playing for like a month. Horizon, Horizon Horizon. Forbidden West, Uh, that has problems as well because obviously it's a a last-gen game that's built for the PS5, so it's having to play catch-up. But every now and again, you'll you'll finish a quest 
and then you'll be talking to the NPC that initiated the quest and their eyeballs and lips will be there for a good second and then their face textures will slowly <laughs> fade in like level by level and it's like watching a galling version of Hollow Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. this is what we get though being uh we're officially out of date now aren't we mm. it's um it's it's made for the ps5 audience so anyone else is kind of left behind and you just have to suck it up well for the seven people on earth that do own a ps5 i hope they're enjoying it oh they are most certainly from what i've heard um <laughs> it's like um cyberpunk it'll be interesting to uh, i don't know if you ever plan to get around to that but no nah, so. that didn't interest me in general mm. so and in fact the only thing that did interest me was a bit like wwe 20k20 20, was that it was so horrifically broken so i broken. thought oh this sounds fun and then they said <laughs> we're gonna patch it so like, ah no why would you do that no well i mean you can still get the base version on ps4 uh regular ps4 and it'll still be horribly broken i don't think any <laughs> any number of patches are going to save that game from the sounds of it so have at it i think you can uh, you can get it cheap if you want some hilarious glitches and yet, how excited are these people going to be for The Witcher 4 when they announce that? Mm. Will they Will they have learnt? And will they, will they learn from their mistakes of demanding the game come out? Because partially it's fan demand that led to it being released as early. I mean, Studio Greed as well. But um, Project CD Red, they had, I'm pretty sure, full control over the release date. It was mainly their shareholders that were pushing for it. Mm. But... Um, yeah, they could have held off the game, but instead they decided to crunch their workforce and, and throw the game out, knowing that it was broken and glitchy because people were bitching about, oh, it's been pushed back again. It's been pushed back for a reason, guys. It's because the game's not finished. I hope you're happy with the results. Here's your unfinished game, just as you demanded. Broken and glitchy sound like um, some type Flopsam and Jepsam type evil sidekicks. Oh, did you know that either yesterday or the day before yesterday was the official birthday of George Jetson? Really? Yeah. Ah. So we're 35 years away from our floating cars and our rosy robot housemates. And his boy, uh, Elvery. Um, Elvery, indeed. What was the name of the dog? Shit. Um, leave it with nope. me. Nope. <laughs> uh, uh, there was a da- park named after it. Daughter's Judy. Yep. Um, uh, God, what's, what's, what's the wife called? Think think about what he shouts when he's on the treadmill. I can't even remember that. Um, it's either Jade or Jane. Oh, it's Jane. Yes, Jane. Jane, Jane, stop this crazy thing. Yeah. I used to, I Astro, used to really like Astro. The Jetsons. Astro, well of done. Of course, thank you. I enjoyed the Jetsons, but I can't remember a single episode. I just remember it being literally the Flintstones, but with future aesthetic, right down to his tiny boss. I think that was the point, wasn't it? It was mm. just kind of... Let's do families and find new settings to put them in. Um, yeah, I I'm the same. I think, but I think that's kind of the thing, isn't it? With with those cartoons, it was it was never about the hijinks they get in. It's just the familiarity of it and the comfort of it. Mm. I think that was uh, as much as anything. Well, you say that. I remember quite a few episodes of the Flintstones, and I don't know how much Flintstones I watched as a kid. Clearly, it was quite a lot, because I remember quite a lot of the Flintstones, but it was never one of those big shows. You know, it was never... Uh, what would I compare it to? Say, Rugrats, Hey Arnold, mm. hell, even Cat Dog, where I sort of had to be that. No, no, we'll go cartoon, cartoon. Dexter's Lab, Powerpuff Girls, that era, where I, I had to be watching it. Mm. With Flintstones, I'm just aware that I watched a lot of it and enjoyed it. Do you know what I think that is as well? It's the lack of uh, recurrent... Um, you know, the, the, it's like Nickelodeon. You, you get home and at, at ha, home after school, and four o'clock mm. is Rugrats, and half past four is Hey Arnold, and then five o'clock and is six o'clock is Sabrina. Six o'clock is Sabrina, and there's that consistency to to watching it. But also, you, what you're not really aware of as a kid is that there are only about uh, what twenty episodes to a season, and so mm. w- within a month you've gone through a full season. And then you're like, you're just trudging through these seasons, endlessly watching them time after time after time after time, <laughs> thinking, I could have swore I saw this like three months ago. And it's because there were only three seasons of Regrets Out or something. Yep. But as a kid, you're happy with that. I feel sorry for my parents who, you know, had memories 
<laughs> and were forced to watch the set. Luckily, mum liked Sabrina, but I think there's a limit to even how much, you know, mum enjoyed Sabrina, having to watch it again and again and again. Mm. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why... Um, you, For me personally, I enjoy the nostalgia of seeing clips of these shows, but I can't watch full episodes because I just... That, that intrinsic memory of knowing what happens <laughs> is there. And as an adult, I'm far more impatient, <laughs> you know, to watching the same thing over and over for the dozenth time. Really? Does that extend to Simpsons and Futurama? Because me and my brother can just sit down and watch a season of The Simpsons end to end and laugh at the jokes that we know are coming up in 20 minutes. I don't I don't sit down and watch those shows and just focus on them. I think that's the mm. thing. Um, in fact, I texted you a couple of weeks ago, I think, didn't I, that I was sat down eating watching The Simpsons for the first time mm. in, in years. And that's the only kind of situation, I think, where I would watch them again is doing something else and uh but i mean uh, saying that i absolutely laughed um uh, myself silly um uh it was uh, oh it was lisa the vegetarian after we were talking about it on the hangout <laughs> it was literally the, the day after i couldn't i couldn't believe the the serendipitous timing do you want it. to talk about serendipitous timing how's this for weird so uh oh, hang on let me think i want to get all three of these in order because otherwise i'm going to miss one um, so my parents, ah, fuck, what were we watching? My parents left to go watch that new Baz Luhrmann Elvis Presley movie. Mm. By happenstance, me and my brother just turned the TV on and there was something else going on with an Elvis theme in it. And then when our friend Adam came over, we put on the movie Hot Shots, which, uh, not Hot Shots, uh, Top Secret, which is mostly a piss take of Elvis. And none of it was planned. No, it really. just happened that everything we watched uh, or was going on that evening was Elvis themed. Oh, this it was really weird. You know what, what would have been weirder is if when you said your parents went out and you put the TV on, you were watching your parents watch the movie. Oh, that would be soon enough. That would be the new Gogglebox 2.0. Yeah. That'd be. I, actually, I quite like that premise. Just, just for no reason, just you turn the TV on and it uh, it follows your parents around and it's like. Who's who is, who's doing this? How are they doing this? How are they? I think it would just make me sad. <laughs> <laughs> Love them though I do. <laughs> it, would, it would just make me profoundly sad. Okay, well that's one way to look at it. I was thinking of it more horror horror film aspect, but uh, I suppose you could also be, <laughs> you know, depressed by it too. Yeah, my my life is a horror film. I don't need to add existential crises to it. <laughs> Speaking of. Um, <laughs> We've got Resident Evil playing uh, a a speed run from who is it? Let me let me get the name of the. Uh, is it going to affect the? It will just a second. It will. Oh no, screw it. It's, it's from whoever. It's in the description. Thank you to uh, the person in the description. For Thank you very much. Um, shall we jump on the uh, Resident Evil? Um, oh, let's do. Let's Resident round Evil. off Resident Evil Month Part Two. Can I? Um, Get some. Uh, is, uh, do you have a final word on the Netflix show? Has it has oh, you, ah! <laughs> ruminated yes. on it anymore since our seven-hour breakdown the other day? Uh, that's it. That was my final gurgling scream. Ah, I see. I see. Um, there was something that I forgot to mention, and I was like, "Oh, I'll, I'll have to just throw that in there." And now, as is tradition, I cannot remember. Is it that it's getting a season two? No, it was it was just an observation about something uh, that I thought was really quite pertinent to now. I can't remember. Oh, is it that Billy's adult self is Korean? No, we went through that enough on the show. Mm, mm. Um, just wanted to make sure we didn't miss that. <laughs> God, that's really frustrating. That's going to annoy me. Anyway. It'll come back to you. It won't, but I'll pretend it will. Um, welcome to Raccoon City, then. Um, I got fun and games. I mentioned on the R&R. But for people that haven't been through all seven hours, I'll, I'll kind of repeat it here. Um, so after finishing the final episode of the Netflix show and just feeling utterly depressed and um, devoid of any hope, I figured, well, now's probably as good a time as any to <laughs> to, to put on <laughs> Welcome to Raccoon City with, with my hopes. It was hopes. a long game plan all along. It was with my hopes and expectations on the, on the floor and uh, dash to the rocks. So, uh, yeah, I put Welcome to Raccoon City on and was surprised at, that I actually 
quite enjoyed it. Um, a lot of flaws, a lot of very obvious flaws. Um, but I was just happy that um, it looked... Uh, the, the, there were things about it that were familiar and of a Resident <laughs> Evil, um, you know, that, that were um, recognisable from the first game and the second game, which... I, I couldn't believe how satisfying that felt after <laughs> after how many Paul W. S. Anderson films? <laughs> six. Six. <laughs> six of those films and the full Netflix series. And I was just like, I don't care if the dialogue shit. I don't care if it's if if Wesker is I don't even know what Wesker is, and Jill's black <laughs> and Leon's uh, uh, like from the Middle East. I don't care. There's a mansion, there are zombies. I'm 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 happy enough. It's fine. Um, so yeah, I, I came out fully aware of its faults, but having had a pretty decent time. Uh, Matt, you 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 re- you watched it today, I think, didn't you? I did. Yes, it's how I kickstarted my morning. Ah, what, what do you think? So I'm I'm going to go from an even more kind of like long winded journey into this. So off the back of the Netflix series, this week I watched. Top Secret, a David Zucker film from the late 80s, early 90s. It's so funny, but we're not exactly talking cinematic masterpiece here. Mm. Then Scary Movie. And then last night I watched Stephen King's The Mangler, a film about a haunted laundry press starring (laughs) Robert Englund and Ted Levine. And that film is a trip in and of itself. That's how I started this week. That's quite a collection of films. Exactly. So going through all of those to Welcome to Raccoon City, like you, I was initially delighted. I spent the first half an hour, at least, of this movie really sucked into it. Mm. And that's not to say that the characterisation is particularly good, because it's not. The one thing that has been very consistent in every single adaption of Resident Evil outside of the Capcom animated films has been a complete fundamental misrepresentation of the characters we know from the games Mm. i could overlook all of that i could overlook all of the incredibly ham-fisted expositional dialogue like the trucker telling claire redfield what were you dreaming about anyway why are you going back to (laughs) raccoon city (laughs) oh yeah that's right your twin brother's there from when you were in an orphanage and now he's a cop and you want to go see him because of some secret mission it's oh god (laughs) and yet um, the atmosphere. This is the first time in in every single adaptation of Resident Evil that we've watched that it felt like at least somebody cared and yes. somebody was trying. Exactly. They could have tried harder. <laughs> could have tried a lot, a lot, lot, lot. Could harder. have got an actual scriptwriter on board. They could have got an actual scriptwriter on board. That would have been nice. Um, but in terms of atmosphere, it was it was a horror film. Mm. It, it was pretty lazy in terms of just predominantly being jump scares but they were scares Mm. and it was soaked in atmosphere the lighting was good it was there was a lot of key jingling you know it it seemed like there were a lot of props for the sake of having props like the keys the dolls certain aesthetic choices were there purely to just be uh uh see the games yeah but that is light years ahead of anything that we've had. When you compare them to the, the Paulus Anderson films, which are absolute train wrecks, but entertainingly so, if you just pretend they're not Resident Evil, they're just really dumb, fast and furious zombie movies. Exactly. And then you've got the Netflix show, which is just wrong. Often painful, frequently wrong. This did feel like a, a step in the right direction. They just didn't. They just didn't have the confidence to make that leap. Yeah. But it was so nice seeing things I recognised, the Spencer Mansion, the uh, the RPD. And that's not that... We're not people that are member berry ish or mm. like James Cameron, that came to mind, you know. And then the lights come on, and then I see things, things I recognise. You know, I'm not caught out on that kind of crap. Mm. But the very fact that they'd gone to the, the effort that they had to actually include things that they had showed there was some level of attention in detail. Hell, the the Spencer Mansion, when they first step into the mansion and it's an almost shot-for-shot replica of the mansion from the first game, I was like, oh, be still my beating heart. 
they didn't do enough with it, but the very fact that Capcom gave them the blueprints of the mansion so they could map it out and redesign the house from scratch. Mm. Oh, just, yes, I want there to be a sequel. <laughs> I may not care about these characters, and we'll get into all the faults with the film shortly. But in terms of what I got right, it was a horror. I liked the music, um, the, the, the non-diegetic music, that is. There were some good songs in there, um, but they were quite intrusive. Mm. The horror was cheap at times, but by and large, it balanced out. Yeah, um, at, at least at least it tried was was my and yeah. it and it had ideas and things. Uh, mm. I, I I actually thought the first thing it does with the um the family next door to Chris was really effective. Yeah, I was super impressed. I thought, okay, shit, this is this they're actually going for it here. This is such a nice turn of pace. It um, was, wasn't it? The idea that the whole town is being slowly poisoned, yes. essentially. And over the years, they've just been abandoned to, essentially... That, <laughs> watching the end credits, some of them are listed as Chernobyl zombies. Just, you know, oh, wow. fallout radiation sickness, how they sort of described it. Mm. But yeah, I like that idea that this town has been slowly poisoning itself. And what I also like, usually it's, it's a bit of a cheat when they have on-screen text telling you things. But the way they... Um, what am I trying to say? The way they presented the film, you have your intro scene in the orphanage and then it skips forward. And then we have a lovely shot of Raccoon City in all of its glory. Mm. At night, in the rain, nice angles, everything else. And then we just get a brief on-text overview of what Raccoon City is, what Umbrella is, what's happening. And then big old red splash text of Resident Evil yeah. over the black screen and then fading in with Welcome to Raccoon City. I was absolutely sold with that it's like yes i'm i'm in this works for me yeah i i felt exactly the same i thought it was a really cool throwback to to like a 70s um horror film especially with, mm. with some of the shots and um there's, there's one in particular which just really tickled me from outside the uh, raccoon city police department i don't know if, if you picked up on it it's just the full shot of the police station mm. and then in 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 a in a window is the um is the captain the police captain is just yeah. looking out and you can see him there and it's very um I, I wouldn't know what to uh compare it to something like the exorcist perhaps uh, just that type of shot with um mm. just just this lone figure in a window um and then with the text that you know you you have the time uh that had just come oh, on that was every nice now and then as well i yeah. really liked it yeah and it's mm. interesting because uh we'll go back to our own thoughts in a second but i feel as though it's uh, it's it's worthwhile to say now um, that a lot of the reviews I've seen of this film are really quite um, down on it from a lot of the things that we've said as as positives, which which surprised me. And again, I don't know if that's just over expectations or just a desire to see something more, even more somehow authentic to to the experience. But I really like the. Um, the these stylistic beats that the film has and as you say the atmosphere is i i thought was aside from the dialogue it did a really good job of of uh, of setting the scene and this always there's this feeling of foreboding always um that is difficult to do but i really quite found it effective where not only do you have something like the um the clock come up every now and again and and they um they sorry i should say that, oh something else that was really effective is the siren that starts at the beginning yeah. of the film and then, and then you're like oh god this is really really creepy that felt um, like a good throwback to silent hill mm, so um, when was that 2005 uh silent hill. was it even earlier silent hill the first 2005 or six the first game uh the the first movie Oh, the first movie. Sorry, I didn't. Yeah. I, I didn't. The see The first it. game was ninety nine, I think. Yeah, that makes more sense. Um, but just to, there's there's nothing really to spoil in the film, so I don't think we're we're in trouble of uh, spoilers for anything because, um, if you, well, it doesn't even really follow the games, but it's kind of, it's very by the numbers of 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 what happens. It's mm. exactly what you'd expect. But, um, so the film starts out and. Cl Claire Redfield is looking for a brother and she's going back to Raccoon City and she's inv investigating Umbrella. And then everything just kind of seems to kick off all at once <laughs> where... Um, is, it, is it Birkin, the, the Doctor? I'm terrible with the periphery uh, yeah, character Birkin. names. Yeah, um, Who ha has ties to 
uh, to Claire and, and and Chris and all that kind of thing. But that that's, that was forced. I didn't think that was necessary. But, yeah, and, I wasn't a fan of that. But what can you do? And, and especially at the end, <laughs> I was just like, where where's all this come from? <laughs> this is like forty You're minutes. No father figure to me. <laughs> yeah, this is forty minutes of a film we've not had. Mm. Um, but anyway, the the opening scenes and uh, and yeah, and an alarm just goes off out of nowhere and uh and, and birkins gets this message on his phone and he's like we need to leave we need to get out of here right now and um it just it just sets the tone of being like okay this shit is about to kick off there's imminent danger and then things just kind of collapse upon itself um, almost instantaneously instantaneously and, and again you can kind of look back on that and say well isn't it a bit of a coincidence that all the zombies appear right as um, you know, there's the evacuation order given for Raccoon City, but it's like, it's just, you don't, you just kind of go along with it. You could argue just, that's how it goes on in the game. Or why else would they sound the evacuation siren if it wasn't the case of, oh crap, now zombies? Oh, of co- well, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, or it could be the zombies were drawn out by the sirens. Who knows? Who knows? But it's, and I didn't even really, I mean, a lot of people were saying that Claire is kind of a boring part of the film and it takes too long to get going, but... I was surprised at how much I actually quite enjoyed Claire. I don't think she's particularly great as a as a character, but I didn't mind her. And I enjoyed the investigation, um, the prior investigation to the zombie outbreak, um, mm. which a lot of people are down on. It's like it takes too long for things to get going. And I'm thinking, oh, no. no it's I, like the first 40 minutes are the best, Yeah, I, if not the first half hour. I agree. I absolutely agree. I, I, I love that. Um, it's just a shame that they couldn't prolong the time in the mansion a bit longer which i felt was um that obviously that's that's your real horror story and mm. and i find it strange that they glossed over that so quickly with a few set pieces and then it was like okay film's about to finish now um so yeah i i i get that you need to wrap up a horror film pretty sharpish 90 minutes or whatever you can't go on too long but i would have really enjoyed another half an hour in the in the uh, in in the Spencer Mansion, just kind of. Well, you know what would have been really nice is if they brought them out as companion pieces, because in in this film they do a rather rather good job of streamlining streamlining film, but games one and two and making them work cohesively as as one whole film, one whole story. Mm. You know, it's it's a very truncated version, but it gets the job done. But if they'd released both films back to back, say Welcome to Raccoon City and The Accolade Mountains or Resident Evil Spencer Mansion, oh, that would have been good. and both films came out the same month, yeah. so you see what's happening with the Redfield side of things and what's happening with the Stars side of things, and then one film can be your big old zombie movie, and the other can be Black Tiger, Yawn, Plant 42 and whatnot in mm. the house, so then you've got your monster movie and your zombie movie, and together you see the whole thing, and it's part of a Resident Evil expanded universe. I mean, that's just wishful thinking but you know but would i have wanted to see a giant snakes giant tarantulas a giant sharks hell yes i would yeah. have loved to have seen that but at this point i was just happy to see competently done passion project resident evil yeah yeah that's what i felt and i mean i don't know what your opinions were of the um the horror scenes in the mansion as well i i really enjoyed it I really enjoyed um, the few scenes that we got, and again, I'll I'll say it again. Um, I've seen a lot of people down on 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 some of it, and I thought, what more do you want? It felt <laughs> it felt really claustrophobic. I loved how dark it was. Um, the, there are a few convenient moments where you think, okay, well, Chris is definitely dead there, but, mm. and he doesn't. But <laughs> at the same time, I, I I just found it really spooky and. The, yeah, claustrophobia is the best word to use because it, it, it has that feeling of of, of just impending uh, death, which I, I think is so relevant to you know survival horror stories. It's like mm. you go around a corner and you get, you're going to get jumped at. Um, and then when Chris's uh, torch goes and it's just dark. And then oh, the scene with the lighter is the best part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And then, well, e- even before that, where it, y- the only light source you get is when he's firing his shotgun, and 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 the screen just illuminates for a second, and you see the zombies, and then he fires it again, and you see, you know, it's just. I thought that was really effective and really creative. Yeah. And then when he loses all uh, light completely, and then I, as you say, I think he tries to use his, his lighter, and he just you just see the zombies in the distance, and it's every time he uses it, it's just getting closer. slowly getting closer. And, <laughs> You know, I I don't know what more people can want. It was really good, really effective uh, horror work. I felt I just wanted it to to prolong, and um, yeah. 
and yeah, have a bit more. The um, the Jill and um, Wesker thing was weird, and I just thought the Wesker's uh, the, the actor, God bless him, was was atrocious. Um, he was all over the place. I'm looking forward to seeing where he's going to potentially go in the sequel, which mm. is looking likely to happen now, and I'm relatively excited about that. Mm. But we have lost our best set piece. Yeah. Which is a bit of a shame. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I don't know what they were doing, really, with uh, Jill being romantically interested in, in Wesker. And then, mm. uh, you know... But, uh, again, I, I really enjoyed their, their section with the helicopter. I thought that was really yes. cool. Moonlight Sinatra, done right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Take uh, notes, Netflix. Um, yeah, I, it, it, it falls apart in the last ten minutes. That's my mm. only major... Cri- well, I mean... Other criticisms is what they do to Leon uh, and Jill, which just it's just a coincidence that they happen to be the um, well, no Wesker as well, and Claire. We- Claire and Claire's a bit of a bitch, but I mean, and not Barry. <laughs> all right, all the characters. That, actually, uh, yeah. So w- while we're on this topic, it's really weird that they had a blonde guy with foppish hair who was a completely original character, and then they had Leon being played by some, as you say, either. Hispanic or Middle Eastern guy and it's like but you have a guy that with a, a haircut could be Leon sitting right here mm, <laughs> what? Mm. why um, that that was odd yeah they the worst part about this film apart from Lisa Trevor um, that were the characters who were just remarkably inconsistent I mean it, they weren't true to the, the game characters pretty much at all although I felt Chris did a pretty good job I really like Chris I'll be honest I thought he was the best of the bunch um, and Jill, I quite liked once I... You know, you can't see them as video game counterparts. Yeah. But a lot of them were just so inconsistent with themselves. Like Wesker. Wesker goes from being like the bro uh, to the squad brother that keeps them all together to the betrayer, Mm. in Jill's words, even though he's sort of confused about it himself. And then he's all in. And then he's repentant. Yeah. And then at the end, his tea is that he's going to go full-blown Wesker. And it's like, who is this character? Yeah. What, why couldn't they just commit? Because I was watching the special features, and there's a lot of... Usually they say, oh, you know, I played the games and whatnot, unless you're Lance Reddick, who's never even heard of Resident Evil. But, you know, everyone seemed enthusiastic. A lot of it was probably just the, the crap you've got to generally say on these things. But they did seem to be people that by and large, probably did play the games or at least knew a little bit about them. So it's just so odd they went with these character choices. And um, I, I got annoyed when they introduced Jill. Not because of the, the race changing, because that's par for the course these days, but because it was another case of modern strong woman. And modern strong woman means complete asshole. Mm. She, she softens as the film goes on. But as we're introduced to her, she's a cocksure arrogant, can't do wrong bitch. She, she, she totally <laughs> so, dominates the room, doesn't she? She, she dominates the room. She then. is the alpha in that, uh, in that scene. Yeah, without even trying. And you think there's, there's a good way to write strong women, but they're all written exactly the same. Same as Claire. Claire barrels in and she just dominates every scene and she's putting everyone in their place. She knows best and everything else. And it's like these two characters are completely interchangeable. And... You you can have strong women who are vulnerable or communicative or are nice. Mm. <laughs> it's, you don't have to remove all of those aspects to prove just how strong they are. But uh, as I say, Jill, I warmed to as the film went on. Claire, not so much, because I don't feel that Claire softened in any way. And she was just angry and bitter and the best all the time. So there wasn't really anything there to, to latch on to. Her story doesn't make sense either, <laughs> which, no. which, you know... I, I, I think we've kind of said we had very low expectations for this film, so we're letting a lot slide. Um, it, but it, it is. It's one of those films where the more you think about it, or, or even at the time, you're just like, wait, what? Um, <laughs> like, at the beginning, um, Birkin, just for some reason, decides that, no, we, we need to get rid of her <laughs> because because she's <laughs> she's snooping too much or something, this this 11-year-old. And, and they kind of escort her away. And then we find out later, mild spoilers, that uh, that they've been um, uh, experimenting on on children. And then you're thinking, so wait, what? They 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 went to take her to experiment on her, but you never tell us 
how she gets away or where mm. she goes or there's this massive chunk or of why she never came back for chris exactly <laughs> or or yeah when when did she and chris reunite and um how are they you know is there no lasting tension or something or you know just these a lot of questions that that get glossed over as if it's just not an issue and it's, it's very strange <laughs> but um it's at the same time as i say it's not like we're overly invested in these characters to, to to make that a point it's it's the spectacle of the situation that is uh that is is, is what this film kind of focuses itself on and i think that's maybe where um people are not getting the satisfaction from this film that i think you and i both are in that we're, we're looking we've gone through so much shit that we're more than happy to look past the faults of the characters because it's the environments essentially mm. i guess that we're kind of looking for and um and it it, it, it does those really well um i, I like the uh, you mentioned the spencer mansion but also the uh the, the police department is just exquisitely realized from the from from the games it, it looks outstanding um and you know scenes like um I, I I really appreciate the scenes like when the police captain's trying to flee Raccoon City and the yeah and 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 it's surrounded by and and, and then like that as well that we don't know too much um, we just kind of get bits and pieces kind of dribbled in and he's trying to leave mm. Raccoon City but it's it's blocked by you know forces we don't know who and uh, shit kicks off and they just start firing indiscriminately in, into a crowd <laughs> and we get caught up in the middle of that just with this police cat and I thought that was really good. You know, we don't need to know too much about the outside world. It's it's a chaotic situation, and we're just going along for the ride from the point of view of the of the police captain. Um, so yeah, I I I I was thoroughly um, <laughs> pleased enough. I, would, I, was, I was I was yes yes. It, it, I was, it did I was never bored. Yeah. I was rarely, very rarely frustrated. Um, yeah, and as I say, I, I want to see a sequel to this. Mm. Um, I'm guessing they'd probably go with Resident Evil 4 or maybe 5, do a bit of a globe-hopping adventure, perhaps. Or maybe Code Veronica, who knows, or even a prequel. Well, they've set but, up Code Veronica, haven't they? So that's, Yeah, um, which I'm excited for, you know. About time Code Veronica got a bit more love. Mm. But it's it's not without its flaws. So shall we talk about those? Uh, by all means. Okay, so the the three things that I disliked the most. What, one thing that stood out for me in terms of just being bad, this is separate to the others, is that um, young Sherry, who, why didn't they dye her hair blonde? Um, but uh, Sherry Birkin, she watches both of her parents get murdered in front of her, and she's <laughs> absolutely fine. <laughs> she is yeah. so happy to be there. <laughs> It's distracting. <laughs> I think. I think. Yeah. Um, for me, especially when you talk about criticisms, it's just like the last ten minutes. Just chop off the last ten minutes, and mm. you know, just just frame that and say no, bad. <laughs> this is bad. I, mean, I, I was I was hoping it would happen, but having seen it actualize, it's like oh no. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, the big no no. We'll, we'll go for the minor problem first. Uh, Lisa Trevor's. As a sympathetic ghoul. Friend? Friend? <laughs> I should never have to hear Lisa Trevor, one of the most frightening video game characters, one of the most frightening and tragic yeah. and um, dauntingly scary video game characters to ever come across. Uh, still puts me off wanting to play the game, aside from mm -hmm. my own frustrations with, you know, getting to grips with the mechanics of, of Resident Evil 1 remake is the fact that Lisa Trevor's uh, Lisa Trevor is just so unnerving mm. that I don't want to deal with her sections again. Her boss in the caves where you've got to just essentially just sideline her so you can get past her. Oh, it's Look, terrifying. No. It's terrifying. It is. It's utterly horrible. A boss that you can't kill. Terrible. Um, so, um, yeah, having her sort of being a, a friend to the children, a little friend to the children, helping them. We should never see a team made up of Claire, <laughs> Claire Redfield, uh, a, a Middle Eastern Leon. Leon Kennedy, and Lisa Trevor. How did that happen? So that was that was pretty bad. I, then, I wasn't a fan of that. Then she goes all um, all Hulk, and she's like yes. tearing apart this liquor and shit. It's amazing. God, I forgot about that. Oh yeah, she hulks out and kills a liquor. How? Why? But, uh, terrible. Bad. <laughs> 
Yeah, so everything prior, it, um, as the film opens, everything prior to the fir- well, even the first Claire scene is just ridiculously awful. Uh, mm. But but what r- recovers it or s- starts to recover it is the uh, the dog that that licks the the blood. Yeah. I, I thought that was a really good idea. Um, but everything prior to that is trash, um, and especially, I mean, it's 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 decent from a horror perspective, but it just doesn't make any sense. So you've got Lisa Trevor, Christ knows how old she is. It doesn't make, you know, there's, there's no lick of continuity with any of it. <laughs> but so Claire Redfield and uh, Cl- Claire and Chris are in um, this orphanage, and the very first thing we see is L- Lisa Trevor, who is a real person. Um, a, a horribly uh, deformed, like just uh, a troll of a of a of yeah. a of a creature. Um, we don't know how old she is, but she appears to be loitering in the children's um, <laughs> in, in the children's uh, bedroom area, and, and no one else. She seems to have picked Claire. We don't know why she's picked Claire. No one else <laughs> has been woken up by this shambling mess of a person just kind of <laughs> moaning around the the halls. She's she's got her own personal lift, <laughs> which doesn't seem to wake anyone up. Or, complete you know, with lock and keys with lock and keys she, and, and and no one's know that she knows that she's there she's just hiding in this tent and i'm thinking what is are they trying to say that it's all in her head and i'm and i'm desperately hoping that it's all in her head and and somehow the lisa trevor thing's just like a a, a a mental manifestation because it doesn't make any physical sense for for what happens um, well, i can't work out is she meant to be in the orphanarium was was Dr. Birkin like, why are you in here? You shouldn't be bothering Lisa. Or was it, what are you doing in here? It's, this room's empty. That, that that would have made more sense. It's not the point, but that would have made more sense. Yeah. Mm. If she's kept in a cage and it's like, what are you doing in here? We told you that you're not supposed to see Lisa. Um, and then Lisa's got like her own key and she can get out. Why don't they have CCTV in these, uh, in, in, in this? Because in this it was 1980. What? Oh, of course, yes. Um, they that did, I liked it, as well. The fact that it was a period piece set it, in yeah. 1998. No, well, there were cell phones, but they were very basic. And mm. again, it it wasn't an attempt to modernise it. It was nicely period pieced. VHS, didn't they? They used the VHSs mm. of. Um, oh, he was cool as well. I quite liked him. The the dorky conspiracy oh, the theorist. Yeah, yeah. Who was did too- he not remind you of the journalist from the Netflix show? Um, he didn't because I actually f- <laughs> <laughs> felt that he was mildly competent, <laughs> apart from apart from using his oh, gun, apart from, apart from yeah. using his gun to shoot the zombie that was uh, clearly about to take his face off. Which yeah, well, backing into the zombie as well, backing into the zombie. Uh, but I, I liked him. I thought he was great. I thought he was mm. uh, campy. It just matched the tone really well, and you know, you don't mind. Um, characters being stupid if it just plays into what we're seeing in front of us and yeah. and and that was what this i felt it got a lot of that right um where it was like okay we're gonna have something gross now um just to kind of make a point and and it did it, it kind of bit him and was like this 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 moment and you just appreciated it for um for a bit of silly gore that it was um but yeah so so going back to the the lisa trevor thing that um I don't, how old is she because as i say she's she's the point is, um, with Lisa Trevor in the in in the games, that she's sort of immortal, isn't she? Um, I'm not actually. That's the point. I'm not sure. I, th- I think in the game because you can't kill her. You can't. She's kill invulnerable her. in she's the game. Invul- so I think. But she was experimented on as a kid, and she then... goes back to the original days of uh, Oz Oswald Spencer. Yeah, and then and the Ashfords. Yeah, and then when. Th- she she is she locked up and then when things go to hell she just kind of gets out and wanders around is that right I'm yeah sure. yeah they take her out and try and kill her but she comes back so I'm guessing she's probably in her forties or fifties it's it's hard to say yeah she's getting on um, mm. but it, it doesn't make any sense how old she is in this because she just kind of seems to I don't know. <laughs> and what's she eating <laughs> How, what, where, where's she getting <laughs> Liquors, food mainly. She... <laughs> so yeah I, it's, it's just it, it is it's, it's very baffling that uh that entire side of the of the uh of the story i don't get it mm. um the other thing that was baffling was the casting of i can never pronounce his surname uh neil mc 
McDonough? McDonough. 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 Yeah. Who, he's one of those actors who should not be allowed to act. Every now and again, he'll turn up in something good. Like, he is great in Justified. But then again, that show can make greatness out of anybody. But I've seen him play essentially this character in too many shows. A lot mm. of them CW. Um, he's perfectly fine at what he does, but he shouldn't be doing it in a Resident Evil movie. And he's, he's okay during the first chunk of the film, but the moment he goes full-on Dr. Isaacs circa oh, Resident Evil Extinction. God, it's And he terrible. starts cackling and, oh, Chris, I raised you like a son and now I am the monster and all this kind of nonsensical dialogue. Um, the G... The G... Two, is it? No, G1. G1 is, it, is in the game. Uh, the G1 form looks ridiculous because his head isn't merged into the eyeball and shoulder. It's just his head with bigger ears <laughs> with a big old monster prosthetic hanging off his right arm. And it's like, oh, I really wanted to see this. And you fucked it up. Mm. <laughs> he looks terrible. Um, and, and he just keeps talking. And sad as it is, I actually think that... Um, Oh, God, I've forgotten the name of the actor, but um, yeah. what's his name? Uh, D- Dr. Isaacs, Jacob Isaacs oh, in the right. Resident Evil movies um, was yeah. better at it <laughs> and not quite as cringeworthy. And that's saying something. Yeah, I don't necessarily think it's his fault. It's just uh, McDonough's fault. It's just uh, it's just a lack of sense that that mm. entire section makes. Um, it just comes out of nowhere, completely out of nowhere. And I I just can't figure out for the life of me why they didn't just have him be a, a shambling monster creature that's trying to mm. um, kill everyone. They need to bring all this stuff about Chris into it. That's you know, Chris, Chris has got no backstory <laughs> in this film. Well, that's it. They're trying to give him an arc, aren't they? Mm. It's like, oh, crap, we forgot. We didn't give him any story to work off of. Um, we'll just interject this scene about, oh, when you left... Uh, Dr. Birkin raised me like a son, and then an hour and a half later, I was like a father to you. Bam! Mm. I'm an orphan. Yeah, it's weird. It is. Uh, it's it is. It's the worst part of the f- film. Just n- Not even in a fun way, like the yeah. Lisa Trevor's just is just silly and ridiculous. It's this just bad. Just, it drags you out the movie. Yeah, it does. The other thing that was bad, my, my last major gripe, was the the G5 stage that attacks mm, the train, mm. that, oh God, what were they thinking? Why did they give it a, a monster face? Because in in the game, it's just basically a giant blob with tusks, teeth, and eyeballs, and that's it. Mm. And this thing looked like something out of, I don't know, Haunted Mansion or some early day CGI monster. It, it reminded me of something, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. But its monster head was so distractingly bad with its LED eyes. Well, it's worth, I can't work out what they were going for with it's that. It's worth saying that all the CGI in this film is horrendously <laughs> bad. Mm. <laughs> it's just... It, it, it is from 20 years ago. It's, it's straight from uh, the first PlayStation. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really bad. But, no, I, I do agree with you that... Um, I don't know what they were thinking, to be honest. Just as, as a set piece as well. Um, because I felt... The the worst thing to say, or, or that you can say about that last two minutes on the train, is that we saw it in the first Resident Evil film. And I thought, of all the things to rip off from the Paul W. S. Anderson film... Well, it's from the end of the Resident Evil 2 remake. Yeah, but do something different. You know, mm. there's, I, I would have thought... Um, for me, that's all I could think. Was um was was just that train sequence from uh, from okay. from the first RE film no, because, that, because that makes sense because yeah. it plays it exactly and you know if you if you're trying to do something uh, granted they they are being respectful to the source material in its own way um, but it's just like you don't need a train <laughs> for every, use <laughs> helicopter you know that's that's how the first film that's how the first uh, game ends is uh, is the helicopter you mm. know from actually being inside the mansion. Um, how cool would it be just to fight through the mansion one last time? Uh, if there's a there's a bomb about to go off in the in the uh, in in the, in the mansion, and then they're kind of fighting their way to get to the roof or something, and and they get someone on the radio that that can uh, pick them up, and uh, you know, just 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 more in, in that regard. Considering that yeah. Chris and Jill, I think, is it Chris, Jill, and Claire? Oh, and, and Leon, I suppose. Yeah, and Leon. Yeah, um, but I don't know. But the 
um, was it terrible? It was it, the, none of the special effects for when the house actually blew up made any sense as well, did it? That, that all looked really ridiculous. Yeah, that that looked very dated as well. Um, I couldn't quite work out what was going on. Because no, I, I couldn't. In the background, you could see a plume of fire, but it was buried behind the trees. So I deduced that the city had been bombed. But it just seemed very odd that it seemed like something had gone off within the mansion to self-destruct Yes, it. exactly. Uh, yeah, and I think that's something that they didn't really think too much about because they, mm. they, they were fighting against time from Raccoon City being nuked. But then the house implodes, I think. And you're just kind of thinking, should there have also been something to tell them that um, there was a self-defense mechanism within the house as well? I don't know. Uh, but that, that's just one of the problems of, of mixing the two stories, yeah. I suppose. It's it's quite rushed. Mm. And it's a shame when you consider how much time wasting there was in the eight hours of the Netflix show. And then oh, God, they tried yes. to cram as much of this uh, of these two games into a less than a two hour runtime. And you think, oh, just such wasted potential there. Mm. Mm. If it had been the other way around, this could have been like the potentially one of the best things on Netflix at the moment. You know, again, not stellar, because the writing isn't great. But maybe if they had more time, they wouldn't have to have, you know, relied so much on exposition. Yeah. Um, whereas, well, not to say anything else about the Netflix show ever again. But yeah, <laughs> missed opportunity. But in many ways, it's it's good, because it means that we have essentially two hours of very mostly tight directing and action and atmosphere and... You know, it all works. Maybe if it had been dragged out, they wouldn't have done anything but stretch the budget and uh, and ruin what this movie had going for it. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it was certainly it was it was delightful. I I couldn't believe I was actually enjoying a Resident Evil property for reflecting the Resident Evil franchise, <laughs> just for doing the simple things and not even necessarily yes. doing them well, but just doing the simple things. That's how that's how far we've fallen in our expectations mm. of these things. I mean, it could be that this be a film, I'll go back and rewatch it in a couple of months, year, a couple of years, and think, oh, God, this is awful. What did I ever think that? And it's just, it was the perfect storm of, you know, watching the, the original six films, Netflix, and then a bunch of other crappy horror movies this week that just made it really stand out as, as elevated material. Well, I feel the exact same way. You know, this, this makes, in fact, I think I texted you the same thing. Uh, this film, to me, makes the... Uh, feels like the Lord of the Rings adaptations after just finishing <laughs> the Netflix show. Mm. Um, so yeah, um, uh, that's I think that's something that um, along the lines of what I was going to say earlier with regards to the Netflix show that I meant to say on the on the uh, R and R is just to stop and think about the ridiculousness of that series. We're in a we're in a we're in an entertainment world at the minute where it feels as though um the surreal is just being treated as normal um whereas years and years ago there were trash ideas uh, th th that you'd hear about being drafted uh, by studios and things and you think oh god that's that just sounds so weird thank god that never <laughs> happened and we're in a timeline now where these ridiculous um proposals are being greenlit just because mm. netflix needs content and disney plus needs content but i was thinking like you know we've spoken about it before the james cameron spider-man films from the 90s and you read through yeah. the, the synopsis and you think wow what an absolute train wreck this was thank god this was could you imagine this being made or the tim burton superman films and you go can you imagine a universe in which these were made and this was considered superman and this was considered spider-man and of course mm. people had the the better sense and and they were never greenlit um yeah, we're in a we're in a time we're in a darker timeline now. We are because these we are through the looking glass. We literally have a series from Netflix. Think about this: ten years ago, if someone would have come up to you and say, "Yeah, so uh, we're going to make a Resident Evil TV show, um, but it's not about the stuff you know. We want to focus on Wesker's clone um, living in the suburbs with his two daughters." You'd be like. Are you kidding? <laughs> and this is the dream sequence, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Wesker's clone in the suburbs with his two Resident Evil. You said this. This. This is a Resident Evil show. Yep. This is. This is what we want to do with Res Resident Evil. And then there's also another part of the show where we go into the future, and the daughter, um, she's 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 just looking to get to a boat, right? And um, and then once she gets to the boat, that's that's just 
that's it. That's her entire goal in this series <laughs> is to get to this boat. And you'd be like, okay, so um, how how what how did the zombies? But where's Chris? <laughs> you know? Oh yes, <laughs> it's just bizarre. Did I get a more firm answer? <laughs> oh, yeah, who would have thought that we'd be looking back on two thousand and what was it? Two thousand eleven. Resident Evil Retribution, where it's like, okay, so they, there's a giant underground facility in which they have several city blocks perfectly replicated of New York, Japan, Moscow, London, mm. and a suburb somewhere in America. I forgot about and that. And we're running cloning f- testing simulations to see what would happen when a zombie outbreak happens. And, and this is how we open the film. And go, Okay. And now we're having to take a step back even further and go, bring bring back the ridiculous crap yes. that was in the Paul Anderson films. God, have some imagination. At least that makes a bit of sense with regards to Umbrella, doing far out there experiments and things, mm. you know, crafting extreme underground, um, you know, bunkers and bases and things. Uh, yeah. But so anyway, let's never talk about that again until it's inevitably announced that it's been cancelled. Yes. Oh, God, could you imagine if that gets a sequel, but Welcome to Raccoon City doesn't? <laughs> I dread to think. But apparently it's made its money back. It um, it cost $125.1 million to make. Or, yeah, th- that sounds about right. Or $25.6 million. It grossed $41 million. Um, but it's seen a massive uptake in video on demand and Blu-ray and 4K sales. So mm. apparently Sony are, are happy with the money that it's made. Mm. So that more than likely entails that we'll see a sequel. Oh, that's fine. That, that'll do. Uh, this yeah. is uh, this is another. You're not watching it, but on the on the screen, there's another Lisa Trevor moment, which is absolutely terrifying. Oh. Where you need to uh, push all the all the blocks off the um, <laughs> off, off the coffin walkway thing, and she's just kind of shambling around trying to whack you with her <laughs> like handcuff oh. things that's right it's uh, it's one of those things where it's creepy enough watching it but unless you've played it the true horror of the lisa sections don't really yeah resonate. especially um when you're doing a knife only run or something like that and <laughs> oh my god that was that's absolutely terrifying uh but <laughs> yeah um and then and then and then she grabs her mother's head from the coffin and throws herself off a off the cliff while screaming mother in the good oh. ending oh that's just blah blah oh it's yep. tragic it's it's, it's amazing it's amazing in how disgustingly tragic that entire story is check it out and if you're not i can't it. believe that that was all for the remake edition yeah i'm i'm i tell you to think that's one of the best remakes ever made i think so i, I all these years later i don't think it gets the respect it deserves considering that mm. the first game came out in what 96 i think that 96 97 yep. and uh and then five five years six years later they think we can do this better and uh and they not only do they you look at the graphical enhancements but the 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 way that they um kind of uh and enhance the story and, and make it a bigger and and the mansion bigger and you know oh it's, just, it's spectacular it is it so really good is. i mean my frustrations with the game on a mechanical level are well documented on this podcast but it is one of my favorite games of all time mm. and that's why i find it even more frustrating because i want to be able to play it i want to advance to the higher difficulties but i just have such a, a difficulty controlling it that it it burns me out with frustration more times than not. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's it's an absolute masterpiece of a horror game and a puzzle game in general. But yeah. Oh, lightning in a bottle. It truly and, was. And it still holds up. I mean, just watching the footage mm. now, I think it, uh, to say that this is from 20 years ago is, I think it still looks absolutely gorgeous. And, I would uh, not want to see a contemporary remake. You know, it, Resident Evil 2 is a more action focused game. I like it. It's it's gorgeous. I really like what they did with the remake of Resident Evil 2. But the first game works perfectly with the, the 2000s era. And, you know, it's been touched up slightly, but that 2000s era CGI and the mm. modelling and, and the lock camera positions, they they don't need to enhance it. I but, but the same that. argument goes for Resident Evil 4, but <laughs> that's not going to stop them, clearly. Yeah. We will see. We will see. We will see. Um... Uh, 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 what else was I going to say on that? Nope, can't remember. Um, anything else <laughs> you've been up to then this week? We've got 15 minutes. 
Oh, well, this sounds the perfect time to test exactly how big of a Resident Evil fan you are. Oh, no. I have found a quiz. Oh, no. Based pretty much around the games. It's not a podcast. Uh, We can't do quizzes. We on the hangout. We only do quizzes. Of course we can. (laughs) On the podcast. All right, go on. All right. So, question number one. Mm -hmm. Resident Evil 2 and 3 take place in what city? (laughs) Badger. Badger. Well, we uh, we have a choice of four, so I can give you the four answers options if you'd like to hear them. Okay, yes, please. Is, is this a okay. Buzz, BuzzFeed quiz or anything? It is not, actually. Um, oh, okay. I went to BuzzFeed, but I couldn't find a decent one. This is proprofs.com quiz school playlist. Oh, okay. The Resident Evil Ultimate Exam. Let's do it. So Bring it. Your choices are Detroit, Raccoon City, Invalis, and Cthulhu. <laughs> Oh, it's Raccoon City. Yay, congratulations. I'm amazed I got that one. Question number two. Who was the sole sole surviving member of Bravo Team? Rebecca, Jill, Claire, or your mother? (laughs) It may just be Rebecca. It is Rebecca. It's Rebecca, oh my God. What does STARS stand for? I can give you the uh, the list of options we have. Go on, then. I, I can't wait to hear these. Special Tactical and Rescue Squad. Mm-hmm. Special Team and Recon Soldiers. Ship Tasters, All Right, <laughs> Sir. And Some Actual Stars. Ah, I think it might be the first one. Indeed it is. Wow. Next question. Who was the traitor in the first Resident Evil? <gasps> Chris Redfield. <gasps> Barry Burton. <gasps> Albert Wesker. <gasps> Barack Obama. Dum, bum, 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 bum. Um, were, were Barry and Wesker both traitors? Technically, yes, but Barry with the good ending can walk it back. Okay, well, it's, it's Wesker then, I suppose. Wesker was doing it because he was a dick. Barry was doing it because his daughter was being held hostage, so... Oh, but you can use that excuse for anything. That's true, I do it all the time whenever I need my bank to give me a loan. Mm. <laughs> what does the T in T-Virus stand for? Tyrant, Titan... Typhoon or tank? Uh, a tyrant, sure, surely. Indeed, it is. I, I just had Who? a, I had, a, I like a brain melt for a second where I was like, "That's that's. Are you sure it's not that's tyrant? too I, obvious? I, I, yeah. I don't. Th- uh, yeah, but yeah. Sorry, Karen. Okay, so who says what are you buying? Jack <gasps> Krauser, Albert Wesker, Leon S. Kennedy, or Merchant? It's the Merchant, of course. It is Stephen Merchant. <laughs> okay, here's here's a good one. To gain the ability to control the Veronica virus, mm. one must undergo treatment or cryogenic sleep for how long? 15 days, 15 months, 15 years, or 15 weeks? Oh, wow, I I, I don't know this one. This this mm. will have to be a guess. Um, I never played Code Veronica, so... It's very good. I You played Code Veronica? I have, yeah. Ah, when? Back it's, in the day? It's, it's got a really strong reputation to it. I, I played it a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. Um, b- 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 15 years. I don't know. Indeed. Ah, I thought it might be. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. In Degeneration, who was the company that had the T-virus vaccine? <gasps> Will Farmer, Tricell, Umbrella, or Toyota? Is it Tricell? Unfortunately not. It was Will Farmer. But you're doing pretty good. That was the first incorrect question. Is uh, Tricell answer. from Resi 5? Um, ooh. I definitely know Tricell. I must be getting it. Tricell was T-R-I- it? Is it T-R-I-C-E-L? Yeah. Uh, uh, double L. Uh, double L. Oh, would you believe that there is actually a Tricell? Tricell is a global engineering company headquartered in Killarney Island. Interesting. So they're the true umbrella of the planet. Yeah. on them. Yes. Right. Try sell. Um, structure. No, I just want to know the game. I don't. I'm not interested in its history. Just tell me the game it's in. <laughs> oh my god. Try sell uh, Resident Evil. Yeah. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, 2009. It must be Resident Five. Yeah, that'd be five. Yeah. I just get back on five. Um, right. So, what do red herbs do? Nothing, amplify other herbs, heal you, get rid of poison, or increase overall health. Oh, it's one of the last two. Is it, um, oh, is it blue? 
it's the blue and the red, isn't it? That uh, one of them extends health and one of them gets rid of poison. It mm. is... Which herb do you use the least? Uh, the, apart from those bloody snakes. That garden <laughs> section. <laughs> oh, no, this, the, this is a guess. I couldn't say. I, my mind's gone blank. I'm going to say um, poison. Ooh, unfortunately not. Oh, they it's a health. Amplify all other herbs. Oh, okay. Because you've got to combine them with another herb in order to get the benefits. Oh, shit. All the others you can take, well, the blue and the green you can take individually. Red, you have to combine it. I see, I see. I can't believe I uh, got that wrong. Happens to the best of us. Hmm. All right, then. Edward Ashford wanted to do what with the virus? Make an army, help the handicapped, sell on the black market, or cure cancer? Um, this is Code Veronica again, isn't it? Um... Mm. Handicapped. Well done. Yeah. Knowing knowing Ooh. the story, uh, bits and pieces of the story. Definitely helps, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> there are no questions about Resident Evil Zero on here, shockingly. What, what are, are they, are they, are they trying to get rid of, uh, what was his name, Billy? Billy from Billy, the... yeah. Oh Billy. my God, how can they do that to him? <laughs> Billy actually, uh, was it Billy? The, the cop that gets eaten by the, the zombie that gets up and turns around, you know, the classic mm. first to zombie. Uh, the character in Welcome to Raccoon City, he was the the lead character that... Um, oh, what was his bloody name? Like, it wasn't Birkin, because obviously it's Barry Birkin. But um, yeah, the, the cop that's being eaten is a, a character from Resident Evil Zero. Oh, okay, that's cool. That's good, that. Yeah. So, uh, next question is, one of the guns in Resident Evil 4 was named after another game. What was its name? Dead Rising, Final Fantasy... Assassin's Creed, Killer Seven, Broken Butterfly. <laughs> uh, broken Butterfly. That's what I thought as well. No, it's, it's, no, no, it's Killer Seven. Of course, it's Killer Seven. Oh, I got red. Oh, I got red herring because I was going to say uh, Killer Seven um, because that is a Capcom game. And then I thought, mm. wait, no, that's not a real gun. But the Broken Butterfly definitely is. So I got, I got, it, it comes I got into done there. Games, definitely. Yeah. Well, balls. <laughs> you could pull it back on this one. How many members of stars are there? We've got 14, 12, 15, 11, or 13. Oh, shit. Well, that's quite tricky, really, isn't it? Tricky one, isn't it? you got to... I guess this one correctly. Oh, wow. Um, so you got the group that goes in there initially, mm. that all die. Um, one, two... Uh, how how many did you say? Sorry, twelve, thirteen, uh, fourteen, fifteen. Between twelve and uh, it's, sorry, between eleven and fifteen. Eleven and fifteen. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, five, twelve. Unfortunately, it was 13. Ah. Unlucky for some when being hunted down by a nemesis. I demand to know all their names. Uh, there was Becky, there was Flublicon, <laughs> there was Ranch Burger, <laughs> okay. Cabinet, Jill, the other Becky, and eight Chris's. Ah, okay. Mm. That, that, Chris Wesker. I only, I only I only counted the seven Chris's. That's where I went wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's where you messed up. Yeah. Well, who knows? You could pull it back on this one. When we dare to ask you, Spencer was killed by whom? Wesker. Chris, Jill, Hunk, or Chuck <laughs> Norris. It may have been Wesker. It could indeed. In good old Resident Evil Zero. What is the only weapon in Resident Evil 5 that can't get infinite ammo? The MP5, the rocket launcher, the M9, the grenade launcher, or the AK-74? No, this is way out of my wheelhouse now. It's been too long. Um uh, can you repeat them? Yep. The MP5, mm -hmm. rocket launcher, M9, grenade launcher, and AK-74. First one. Ooh, unfortunately not. It's the grenade launcher. The grenade... The gre what? Yep, you can't get infinite ammo on the grenade launcher. Why? And yet, the rocket launcher, you can. I'm going to say, that's... I would have I thought... Or out of all of them, the grenade launcher. You can get infinite ammo on the first game for grenade launcher, I think. Baffling, isn't it? That's very strange. <laughs> this one's an easy one. What is the only continent that a Resident Evil has not taken place in? 
Asia, Australia, Europe, Antarctica, South America. Uh, the only continent it's not taking place in. Um, I'm going to say Australia. Well done. Yeah. Alexia turned her father into what boss? The Tyrant 001, Nemesis, U3, Nosferatu, or the <laughs> Leech Queen? <laughs> A lot of Resident Evil Zero questions cropping up now. Mm. Um, uh, what would so repeat them again for me, please? Uh, the Tyrant 001, mm -hmm. Nemesis, U3, Nosferatu, and the Leech Queen. Is it Nemesis? Unfortunately not. It's Nosferatu, the bat. I Not too many of these left now. Can't remember that. Yeah, it's the uh, the fight with the bat in the bell tower. It's a pain in the ass because you're having to deal with a boss that can fly out the screen. Mm. <laughs> One of the many quirks of Resident Evil Zero. Yes. The best game in the franchise. The Resident Evil iconic enemies that were mutated lizards were called Hunters, Lickers, Neptune, Cerberus, or Plant 42. Hunters. Well done. Yay. Stars members are given what pistol? The M9, the Glock 17, the Blacktail, the Burst Handgun, or the Samurai Edge? Oh, shit. Um, mm. Samurai Edge, I think, is the gun that you get when you complete it totally, isn't it? Um, um, ooh, I think so. I think it's the ultimate gun. But is that the... Is that what they mean? Is that only given to stars members? Like, congratulations, you are officially stars for completing the game on hardcore. Here's your samurai oh, edge. Well, yeah, I suppose not in that case. Um, uh, can you go through them again, please? Sure. M9, mm -hmm. Glock 17, Blacktail, Burst Handgun, Samurai Edge. I'll go for the Glock. Let's go with that. Oh my god, the Samurai Edge. I guess it, it is, is like the, samurai the official edge. pistol. Oh, god damn it. Oh. Ooh. Here's a good one. Resident Evil 4 is on how many systems? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, or all of them? All of them. <laughs> well, five is the size it goes, and that's correct. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say it's on GameCube, PS2, uh, PS3, PS4. <laughs> PC. PC. Uh, it must a be box on... box with a bit of cellophane strapped over it and a battery plugged into the back. Yeah, it must be on the Xbox... I would have thought. I don't think it was. I, I think it... Is it even... I think it might be on the Xbox One. Yeah. But it definitely didn't come to the Xbox or 360. Is five the number? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it may be a bit outdated, but at the time... All right, so two questions left. How many living, breathing characters do you see in Resident Evil 2? Ooh, that's a tough one. Oh, wow. 10, 13... 15, 17, or 19? No idea. No, just put anything, I've no idea. Uh, give me a number between one and five. Four. Correct, 17. Hooray. Hooray. Hooray, I knew that all along. All along, you clever, clever boy. And your final question. The best character in Resident Evil is <laughs> Albert Wesker, <laughs> Leon S. Kennedy, Jack Krauser, Chris Redfield, or other? Um, it's obviously other. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, so you got 62 out of 100. I don't know oh. what that relates to in terms of correct. Hang on. No, One, that's... two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 12 out of 20. I thought it was doing better than that. I must. I, I kind of crashed towards the end. I think didn't yeah, I? Yeah, towards the end, it, it got a bit, uh, a bit fiddly. I mean, a, a, a couple of them, like the uh, the herbs, tripped you up mm. and uh, and whatnot. But yeah, pretty, pretty good. It's a shame we couldn't find one that incorporated the movies into it as well, because that would have been a spectacular oh. shit. For, if you could get more <laughs> answers based on the movies, then you could have the games. Then, <laughs> then <laughs> something yourself. is wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, that was fun. Well, that's say, fun. you have proven that you indeed know at least a little bit about Resident Evil at movie least, franchise. At least a little bit, yeah. I can I can frame that on my wall and, and be satisfied for the rest of my I'll days. I'll print you off a certificate. It oh. says, perfectly adequate. <laughs> You are not going to be targeted by Nemesis anytime soon, but you are worthy of the remake of Nemesis. No, well, okay. 
perfectly adequate in every way. Yeah. It's like a shit Mary Poppins. Exactly. That's what I was going for. A nemesis Mary Poppins. Full of stars. And on that note, what better way to finish this <laughs> this episode of the Charisma <laughs> Vacuum Hangout? Thank you for joining us. We are here every Thursday night at 8 p.m. UK time. Come and join us. We we just do this. We just talk. Mercy Resident Evil. But we're just going to take a break from that. Uh, yeah. Um, we'll have to find some other stuff to do from now on, won't we, really? We could talk about The Simpsons. Uh, yeah. Or Resident Evil. Those or... seem to be the only things we talk about at least. <laughs> <laughs> we need more hobbies. We'll find something, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll make something up. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. Until next time, take it easy. Farewell. Goodbye. Stars. Thank <laughs> you.